Podcasts. In this series of videos, we'll guide you on how to implement a basic branch gateway configuration using the Aruba ST branch solution. This is the network we are going to build by the end of this series using an Aruba 9004 LTE gateway, a 6100 CX switch, and an AP515 access point. To get started, log into your Aruba Central account. We are assuming that you already have central login and appropriate branch gateway licenses. If not, please refer to our Aruba Central how-to videos and introduction to Aruba SD VAN solution. Before we provision our gateway, we'll create a basic configuration to get us started. Log on to your central account and navigate to the Network Operations Center. Click on Organization. Click on Groups. Groups in Aruba Central are used to manage your device configuration. Think of them as configuration template containers. As you add devices to a group, devices will inherit the group configuration settings. You can then further modify configuration on an individual device level. This makes it easy to scale and manage your network deployment and maintenance. Click on the plus sign to add a new group. Give it a name. Select Access Points, Gateways and Switches and click on Next. Select AOS CX Only Switches and click on Add. Click on the back arrow and click on Sites. Sites are used to group devices in Central by physical location. Sites are used as one of the primary navigational elements. For example, if you wanted to check which users are connected in a particular location or check on the health of all network devices in that location. Sites do not carry any device configuration settings. All configuration is done either through groups or at the individual device level. Let's click on New Site. Give it a name and address and click on Add. To start a config for gateways, select your newly created group in the context menu and click on Devices. Select the Gateways tab and click on Config. You'll be prompted by a gateway setup wizard. Cancel out of it as we'll configure our gateway manually. System IP is critical to your gateway operation. Each gateway will use one of the VLAN interfaces as its system IP. This interface is used to initiate gateway communications with network services such as RADIUS, Syslog, TACAX and SNMP. You can specify a static system IP for every gateway or you can use Central to automatically assign system ID from a pool of addresses in each gateway group. This is the recommended option. Make sure you choose a range of IPs that are not used elsewhere on your network and that you have a sufficient number of IPs to cover the number of gateways you will provision into this group. Please note that this IP needs to be routable on your network. Note also that Central will create a new interface VLAN 4087 to be used as a system IP. Click on Save Settings. Click on the Model tab. Here we are going to specify the hardware model of our gateway. Each group can only contain devices of the same gateway model. You'll need to create a separate group for each gateway model you are using on your network. We are using the 9004 model with LTE. Click on Save to continue. Having an accurate time set is critical for networking devices. We are going to set up a public NTP server with burst mode enabled and also set our time zone. DNS is another critical service. We'll get our DNS configuration from the ISP, which is the default setting. We'll also need to set up a local admin account on the gateway, in case we ever need to log in directly to the device using CLI. Make sure you select the super user role when adding the account. You can also specify RADIUS or TACAX authentication with a local user as backup, but we'll stick with the local account for this lab. Click on Save Setting and move on to the LAN tab. Click on the plus button to add another VLAN. We will provision a management VLAN 1 to be used for our network devices. It will have a static IP, but we will configure the IP settings at a device level later on because they will be unique for each gateway. Check the IP DHCP server option. Again, this will enable DHCP server globally, but we will set DHCP settings on the device level later on. Click on Save Settings to apply changes. Move on to the LAN Ports tab. Here we are going to bind the newly created management VLAN to a GE0 interface. Click on the plus button. We'll call this our LAN port, leave it in access mode and specify management VLAN as our access VLAN for this port. Click save and save settings. Click on advanced mode, select the security tab and click on apply policy. Gateways will apply AAA profile profiles to untrusted interfaces and firewall policies to trusted interfaces. We will talk more about security in the last video. For the time being, we just want to allow all traffic on this interface without any authentication or firewalling. 
Select interface GE0, check the trusted checkbox and click on save settings. To configure our WAN interface, we'll click on the interface tab and select VLANs. Click on the plus sign to add another VLAN. We'll call it primary internet and set the VLAN ID to 4094. Please note, gateways will use VLAN 4094 for auto provisioning and since we are provisioning this gateway over our primary internet connection, it will retain that VLAN 4094 setting after provisioning is over. Click on save settings and select the newly created VLAN and select it again in the bottom section. Scroll further down and make these changes to the VLAN config. IP routing checked, IP assignment DHCP, NAT outside checked. Click on save settings and navigate to the ports tab. Click on the plus sign to add another port. We have already configured port GE0 as a LAN port. Please note all ports but GE1 can be used for zero touch provisioning. We'll use port GE3 as our primary internet uplink and we'll also provision our gateway over it. Check it and click on save settings. Select port GE3 under the port section and modify the port settings below. Port type WAN. Make sure trust setting has been checked and WAN IP protect ACL policy is specified. We'll talk more about the trust settings and security in the last video in this series. Leave port mode as access and select the newly created VLAN 4094. Click on show advanced options and disable spanning tree. Click on save settings. Click on the VAN tab, then click on the plus sign to add a new uplink. Specify link type and internet, give it a name, change VLAN to 4094. VAN speed setting is used to determine the link utilization. For asymmetric links, you should use your uplink speed. Click on save settings. The last thing we are going to do is set firmware version compliance for gateways belonging to this group. Click on firmware under the context menu, select the gateways tab and click on set compliance. Enable set firmware compliance, select the desired firmware version, check auto reboot to complete firmware and click on save. This will force our gateway to upgrade firmware to the specified version when added to the group. Log on to your central portal and select device inventory. Click on add device and enter the serial number and MAC address of the gateway, switch and AP we are going to use. Click on done. Go back to account home and click on license assignment. Click on the gateways tab, select your gateway on the list and click on manage assignment. Refer to our introduction to Aruba SD band solution for more information on licensing. In this video, we'll be assigning the SD branch advanced license with security. Click on update. Now we're ready to provision the gateway. We'll plug port GE3 into our internet router. Branch gateways have zero touch provisioning feature enabled by default on all ports except port GE1. If you plug them into a network with DHCP service enabled, and they are able to connect to central provisioning servers over port 443, they'll try to auto provision assuming you have licensed them in central. When the gateway has finished booting up, navigate to account home, network operations center. Change to global context, navigate to organization under the context menu and click on groups. After about five to 10 minutes, your gateway should appear in the list. This means the gateway has been provisioned and is communicating to central. In order for our configuration to apply, we need to move this gateway into the group we created earlier. Expand the default group, select the gateway and click on the move device button in the bottom right corner. Select our branch group as the destination group and click on move. Our gateway will now download the config from the group and it may upgrade the firmware in order to match the firmware compliance policy we said earlier. Click back and click on site. Drag the gateway into the site we created earlier. This will make it easier for us to monitor it moving forward. Select our site in the context filter. Click on topology. You should be able to see our current network topology with the gateway connected to the internet. In our next video, we'll set up our management LAN and provision a switch and an access point into this site. For more how-to videos, please visit phoenixpro.club. Please click like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest content. Thank you for watching.